This is 5 on your side at 10. We begin tonight with breaking news out of North St. Louis. That's where a one year old child is fighting for life after the child and an adult were shot within just the past hour and a half. Let's get right to five on your side, Robert Townsend, who's live on the scene tonight. Robert, what are you learning? Hey Brent, right now there are lots of police officers and lots of detectives out here in this neighborhood. As I step back and we come on the air, you can see this scene is still blocked off. Officers have blocked off several intersections all around Pleasant and Lee Avenues here with crime scene tape. Again, this is where they say around 830 tonight, a one year old girl was shot in her head and a 23 year old man was shot in his chest. Now investigators believe the victims were in a black vehicle. You see that vehicle right back there for the past 45 minutes. Minutes. Officers have been focusing on that car. The lights you see are still on that car right now. Both doors wide open. Again, homicide detectives have just been called in, I'm told, by one officer here at the scene. And at this point, they do not know who shot these people or why. Obviously, this is a developing story. They're still trying to figure all that out. But right now, no one is in custody in connection with this double shooting happening right now near Pleasant and Lee here in North St. Louis. Of course, we're on top of it and we will continue to follow it for you live now in North St. Louis. I'm Robert Townsend, five on your side. All right, Robert, thank you. Tonight's shooting brings a total to 60 children shot this year. It comes as St. Louis police officers just started working 12 hour shifts. Outgoing police chief John Hayden hopes it will help curb crime, especially as we head into the summer. Before that breaking news, Robert Townsend spoke with many of you about this big change. It's Friday night and St. Louis police officers are now putting in extra hours, hoping to cut down on crime in the city. It's unfortunate that all this crime's happening downtown because it's such a great city. Yeah, I think they will make a difference. Again, the officers 12 hour mandatory shifts will only take place on weekends this summer. The new move comes on the heels of 76 homicides in the city as of Friday. 59 children shot so far this year and following a rash of car break ins downtown. I'm hoping I'm seeing more. This downtown resident hopes putting extra officers on weekend duty means he will see extra officers on the streets, even though the police department is still 127 officers short of what is considered fully staffed. It gives people the, the idea that they're actually present in the streets um, and they're actually doing their jobs. I'm just hoping that with the 12 hour shifts, they just don't get overworked and just get worn out and burnt out and hopefully not a lot of them quit. Some board of aldermen members and the president of the police officers association also expressed concerns about overworking officers in an already strained department. I think it can make a difference, but it is not the total solution. Fifth Ward Alderman James Page says citizens must also be held accountable in helping police keep the city safe. It's going to take uh, ordinary citizens pulling back from the brink, not using guns and other weapons as a way of uh, solving grievances. Robert Townsend reporting police will work one of two shifts, one from 3 p.m. until 3 a.m., the other from 7 p.m. until 7 a.m. That will last through September. Developing tonight, the Major K Squad investigating a homicide in Madison, and they need your help. It happened last night outside of the Madison Meat Market. Police say two men were shot. One of them, Reginald Beasley III, died. He was from East St. Louis. Police are now looking for a black car that might have a white defect on the hood. Call police if you know anything. The St. Louis Board of Aldermen meeting today for the first time since the former president, Louis Reed, resigned. Reed and two other former aldermen, Jeffrey Boyd and John Collins Muhammad, are facing federal fraud and bribery charges. Today, interim president Joe Vollmer called for restoring trust in city government. I've had people sending congratulations, but I find there's no celebration as to this matter. The events that have thrust me into this position are deeply, deeply saddening. This board has been mortally wounded. I hope to try and restore public trust in our actions. Vollmer will be the interim president until a special election happens in November. Two school districts are updating their mask policies. Parkway and Hazelwood are requiring masks inside of buildings for summer programs. They're making the changes because the St. Louis area is at a high risk level for COVID. 
Just 14 hours from now, the nation's capital will be flooded with thousands of people rallying for gun control. It's the annual March for Our Lives rally. Events are planned in cities all across the country, including one in downtown St. Louis. It follows several mass shootings across the country. The march in D.C. was started by students in 2018 after a mass shooting at their high school in Parkland, Florida. Lawmakers are currently debating gun control on the national level. My administration can continue to do everything we can to lower the prices to the American people, and the Congress has to act, and they have been of late. President Biden today addressing inflation during a stop in Los Angeles. He called out shipping companies for higher prices and blamed Russia for rising gas prices. New numbers out today show inflation rose 1% last month. It's now at 8.6%, the highest rate since 1981. Analysts do not see any relief soon. One of the many expenses affected by growing inflation is housing. And tonight, our Verify team looks into a viral claim about whether minimum wage can even cover rent. Here's Casey Decker. Home prices and rents continue to rise, but the federal minimum wage hasn't changed since 2009. One viral tweet claimed, quote, the average rent in the U.S. hit a new record high of $1,827 last month. On the federal minimum wage of $7.25, people take home $1,256 a month. Let's verify, has typical rent in America exceeded the income earned on federal minimum wage? Our sources, the Department of Labor, and three real estate sites that produce research on rent prices. The federal minimum wage is $7.25 per hour, so let's calculate monthly income. On a 40-hour work week, if you worked 52 weeks a year, that comes out to $1,256 per month, just like the tweet claimed. Now, of course, some states have minimum wages higher than that, but we'll come back to that. The tweet says the average rent in America is $18.27 per month. That number comes from Realtor.com's April estimate of median rent. It's based off units advertised on the site in the top 50 metro areas and only includes studio, one bedroom, and two bedroom apartments. Redfin does a similar estimate based on listed units of all sizes. Its number for April was $19.62 per month. And Zillow's estimate actually tries to account for all rents, not just new listings. Their national typical rent number, $19.27 per month. All of those rent estimates are significantly higher than the $12.56 per month you can make on federal minimum wage. That means we can verify that the tweet is truthful when it claims typical rent has exceeded the income earned on the federal minimum wage. So what wage would you have to make to afford typical rent in the U.S.? Using Zillow's 1927 estimate, you need to make 1122 per hour. And that's just to make rent. It doesn't account for taxes or other living costs. 16 states plus D.C. have minimum wages that high, but the cost of rent in those states may be higher than the national estimates. With your Verify, I'm Casey Decker. And if you have a story for us to verify, send us a message by texting the word Verify to 314-425-5355. You can expect delays around I-170 this weekend. MoDOT closing the highway in both directions between St. Charles Rock Road and Page Avenue. Crews are tearing down the Midland Bridge. The interstate is expected to reopen by the Monday morning rush hour. Detours will be posted. The Navy's Blue Angels are back this weekend. They're performing at the Spirit of St. Louis Air Show in Chesterfield. There will be air shows this Saturday and Sunday from 11.30 a.m. until 4 p.m. on both days. Tickets are available online. And Brent, great weather for that tomorrow, but we did have showers and storms, some with rotation in them tonight, no severe weather. Those showers and storms are fading without that sun. So with the sun setting, now things are calming down. We'll talk about the heat that's in the forecast. It's going to get really hot, especially by Monday. All right, Jim, we'll see you soon. Five on your side, by the way, is a proud partner of the Foes of Honor campaign, sponsored by Schnucks. From now until July 4th, you can round up at the register. The money you donate provides scholarships for spouses and children of fallen and wounded service members. 
tomorrow morning is the annual Susan G. Coleman More Than Pink Walk. It's at Tower Grove Park. The site opens at 730. The walk begins at 930. Walkers can meet at the Sons of Rest Pavilion, which is off of Southeast Drive. And great weather for that. So tomorrow morning, don't expect any rain, although tonight we had very close to a couple of cells that were very strong. Now, no severe thunderstorm warnings or tornado warnings, but some with rotation. And so we are still keeping our eyes on a little cell right here in Western Warren County. A couple of showers in Madison County and uh, Illinois, and then also Madison County, Missouri. A couple of showers there, but they're fading and uh, tracking down to the south around Farmington and Potosi at the moment. So we're on the periphery of this huge dome of high pressure that's building in the west. And so you get that northwest flow. We're going to watch one disturbance after the other uh, move into the region. And so we could still see thunderstorm chances in here tomorrow night and maybe Sunday before we get this huge dome of heat that is causing heat advisories for Texas, excessive heat warnings for the southwest and into California. And eventually it moves in our direction. So that future cast showing you this first. This particular model shows showers and storms in here tomorrow late evening to around midnight should be weakening. So we'll have to watch those and then also on Sunday a chance of that. So there's a marginal risk of severe weather. Main threat will be hail and high wind gust. And we had a couple cells today that were getting close to severe limits, but not quite. And, and we might not actually see this all come together. So what really is going to happen is the heat. And that starts on Sunday, the really high heat and goes into next week. 71 degrees right now and that high today, 83. The overnight low was 67. And here it is. Wanted to show you those forecast highs. So Sunday in the 90s and then Monday 100, 101 Tuesday, both will be records. And then Wednesday 99, close to the record of 101. So we will be watching that on top of humidity. What it really is going to feel like is about in the afternoon on not only Monday, but likely Tuesday and Wednesday, about 105 to 110. And then we might get slightly less humid weather, just slightly by the end of the week. So here it is a humidity day by day. Those steamy days will be Sunday, Monday, Tuesday and into Wednesday. And then again, maybe slightly more comfortable, but still very hot. So limit that physical activity outside or or maybe go for that jog in the very early morning hours. Drink plenty of water. Remember your pets and kids and don't leave them in the car. That's for sure. All right, 10 day forecast showing uh, temperatures with the heat indices 103 to 110 Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then as we head into Thursday, we might see some storms Wednesday night to Thursday could knock the temperature down to about 91, but then staying in the 90s all the way through next weekend and, and really dry too. Yeah, and hot. All right, Jim, thanks for that. Time now for five on your sideline with Hannah and Corey.